Hi everyone, my name is Seth. I write epic fantasy and science fiction as S.B. Sebrick. Um, today I want to talk a little bit about the difference between writing as a hobby and writing as a profession. A lot of people that write for fun as a hobby, they love the idea of being able to make a living writing their fiction. Um, they think that that is a wonderful idea and it really is. Uh, but a lot of us, when we when we first dive into doing it as a profession, doing it for money, uh, we have this rosy glass image of how easy it's going to be and how it's all going to work. We tend to run into a brick wall at first because we don't know how to run things. We don't know what kind of changes we need to prepare for. So I wanted to talk a little bit about my transition from writing as a hobby to writing as a professional author. And then maybe some of the, um, the blocks that I ran into when I was first learning um, you guys can, can be able to avoid those. First off, I'd like to say there's nothing inherently wrong with writing as a hobby. That's a perfectly fun way to pass the time. It's a wonderful form of self-expression. There's plenty of therapeutical effects at, to, to help people get over whatever problems they're dealing with in life. But there are some very stark differences that you need to keep in mind if you ever consider going from a hobbyist to a professional author. When you're writing as a hobby, you can write whenever you want, as often as you want. Uh, when I was a teenager, I got into the habit of writing. Uh, I had this novel idea I wanted to play with, and I wrote a 50-page long short story. At the time, I thought it was a novel, but I didn't know enough about the markets to know genre and length and stuff. But it was a 50-page short story, uh, the epic fantasy of variety, of course. Uh, and then an interesting thing happened. Um, I found the Final Fantasy franchise along with a number of other video games, and I got into advanced classes in high school, and I didn't write for another three or four years. Uh, for a hobbyist, that's absolutely fine. Uh, for a professional writer, that that is, um, what am I thinking, career suicide. The hobbyist just kind of writes in the, in the moment, when, the, when, the, when they have the really good idea, and they just can't, they, it has to, to go on somewhere, so they write it down. Uh, and a hobbyist might come to the point where they send out their stuff for, for publication, but most of it's about working with their own stories, figuring out their own characters, their own worlds, and the idea of sharing that with someone else truly terrifies them. Uh, the idea that someone, specifically the idea that someone will reject it and not like it, can be very terrifying when you're first putting your work out there. So that's really the first thing that you need to be aware of when you're going from a hobbyist to a professional fiction writer, is people there will be people that will not like your stuff and that's okay because there will also be people that really love your stuff and really want more and when you reach that when you find that first fan that that really loves your characters and is just waiting for you to come out with the next book there is no better feeling it's fantastic but in order to get to that point you also need to kind of emotionally distance yourself from your work. When you're first starting out as a hobbyist, your, your novels are these precious little babies that, that nothing can touch, that are perfect, that, that need to be protected. And then they, when they go out into the cruel world, they're going to find people that don't like them, people that will call them cliche, that might say the writing sucks, um, for whatever reason. And some of it might be because your writing needs some work to get up to a professional level. Some of it might be that your main character reminded them of their stepdad that always spit in their coffee every morning. There's just a lot you can't control in this world. But when you become, when you go from a hobbyist to a professional, you need to be able to distance yourself from that, that this work is my baby mindset. And then your, your works will become, they'll become works of art. Uh, really, but not works that you need to go to a full lawsuit to defend because someone said that your diction was trite. Then when you get into professional writing, things become a little more um, disciplined. Uh, in order to maintain an audience, which is really what you do as a professional author, you want to have an audience constantly waiting for your next book, your next short story, your next series. In order to maintain that audience, you have to be constantly producing content. This is something that I really, I am not very good at. I have, over the last four years, between different jobs, between changing careers at college, and all this other stuff going on, maintaining a blog just kind of fell by the wayside. And I would go months without really commenting or interacting with my readers at all. And my sales did suffer because of that. And that's something that I'm working to, to resolve. And I'm exploring the idea of using these YouTube videos as a way to connect with my readers that 
that brings out my personality, but that also doesn't weigh over me. Like if I'm trying to write a three, four, five page blog post every week, that's going to hang over me as something I have to do, which you really don't want to get into when you're doing marketing. Whatever you do to try and market your work, it needs to be something that, that is engaging with you. And I really do like discussing these things and helping out other writers that, are, that have these questions. So this is something that for me, I think is a good way to maintain that, that, that reader conversation, to maintain their attention. Um, but for you, it might be something else. Um, for you as a professional author, maybe you really like writing blog posts. Maybe you like just putting pictures of your cat's latest costume up on Facebook. Or you have a newsletter that you maintain and you just email all of your readers once a month with a free short story. There's all tons of ways to maintain that audience. But one thing that all professional authors have in common is they maintain that audience and they're constantly producing content to maintain their attention. When you're a hobbyist, you can you can just kind of say, okay, I'm going to take a break from writing for the next, you know, I'll come back when I feel like it. It could be a month, it could be a year, I don't know. You can't do that as a professional author and expect to make money. You can't do that as a professional author and hope for sales. It just doesn't work. When you're a professional author, you're going to have to develop this discipline to fill any time you can uh, with writing. Um, recently at work, I had some I tried to find different ways to make that happen. I had some downtime in the last couple of weeks at work, and I've been trying to get this novel pushing to, to finally be done so I can move on to the next project. Uh, and I, at first, I tried writing out by hand, which was, <laughs> I mean, when I'm, I'm at work, I'm on the go, I'm driving from one client to the next, I can't bring my laptop. Um, so I was writing out by hand, and I found that it took just about as long to write it by hand as it took to transcribe it back into words. So that that really, it wasn't worth the time. Uh, and then I, I upgraded to a smartphone, and all I have to do now is I open up an email, and in the draft title, I put in whatever scene of the novel I want to work on, and then I just create it as an email. And then on my phone, I could just, when I have a couple minutes of free time, obviously you don't want to be writing while you're on the job. Um, but sometimes I do transportation for clients, so I'll literally be sitting in the parking lot waiting for them to come out for 20 minutes. There's a good 200, 300 words right there. Um, professional writers will do that. They will find, they have to maintain enough words being written in order to maintain that reader's attention. It might be a novel a year, it might be 10, it might be 5, but what they all have in common is that it's consistent. You can't s start doing a novel every 6 months and then stop and not do an all for two years and then suddenly publish four novels and expect all of these sales to pop up because when you took that two-year break all these readers they stopped hearing about you they stopped seeing stories from you they stopped getting posts and they stopped paying attention and then maybe they'll come across your your new novels later but they certainly aren't waiting in line right now for them to come out and therefore you won't make as much as much money when that big cluster of novels you just did in a hurry so, um, I've done that myself too. I, I got I was still writing, but I wasn't maintaining that uh, reader attention. I wasn't subs mailing my subscribers. Uh, it was during a time at college when I was just up to my neck trying to work and study at the same time. Ironically, this January I'll be working, studying, and writing all at the same time, which will be an interesting experience. I planned it. That's another reason why I'm going to YouTube to. Uh, as a way to just keep my thoughts on writing and publishing, but in a way that doesn't take as much time as writing a blog. All right, so I hope some of these points that I brought up um, prepare you for those of you that are writing as a hobby and want to become a professional author, uh, as well as perhaps may have given you some of you professional authors an idea for ways to kind of up your game into the next level. Um, stay tuned for, for my next video. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to be talking a little bit about mailing lists. Uh, it sounds really dry, but honestly, it's a way to make so much money at fiction writing. You will find out. You will see. Uh, I hope you guys are all having a great day. Uh, as usual, don't forget to uh, subscribe below. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave those down in the comment section. Uh, I'll try to respond to those within 24 hours. I hope you're all having a wonderful day, and I'll talk to you later.